Hey guys, it's Trice here, back with Automation the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right in front of you is the Crapmobile. Well, in particular, it's the version 3 variant of this car, is that why am I out here with this vehicle, as well as you can see with the trim model, we got the version 3 Neur Edition is that I want to customize this here vehicle, particularly more in the engine, to see if I'm able to run this vehicle to do a whole lap around the entirety of the Nürburgring Nordschutzleaf. I tried driving this exact car around the Nürburgring, and unfortunately, I was unable to conquer one of the uphills, and I got stuck. I tried doing the reverse and forward method, the zigzag method, and unfortunately, I couldn't go nowhere whatsoever. So with the customizations and everything, we're not going to do much with the body, but we're going to focus more on the engine, which is right here. This tiny-ass 203cc engine. For the horsepower that I'm going to pretty much aim for, well, originally this was a 1 horsepower engine, but with the new automation updates, we now got 1.4 horsepower and 2.6 pounds-feet of torque with a considerable amount of valve flow, but doesn't show on the stress portion right here, but... You can see the, the performance degrading. But performance-wise, I'm going to see if I can go up to around 3 horsepower, which, one thing's first, decrease power, get rid of the balance shaft, 1.5 horsepower. And surprisingly, the pistons do... Uh, yeah, now we're at 1.6 horsepower. The comrades too? Nobody lighten up the engine. So, 3 horsepower. Let's lower the cam profile and... Oh my god. Oh my god. 2.7? Well... <laughs> Well, boys, we're done. We're making, like, pretty much almost 3.1 horsepower. Let's up the cam profile just a tad, make things a little bit worse. Let's see. So, three, right around here. So, increase the springs, the stiffness of the springs, and get to a three. A little bit more. Not too bad. So, that was pretty quick with the customized the engine. So, three horsepower, 3,200 RPM. The torque at five pounds via torque at 3,100 RPM. Well, it's going to be a bad one. So, changes to a three horsepower instead of the one horsepower. And put the finishing touches of this car and take you to the Nürburgring on BMG Drive. And it made things even more stupid. Let's put the text on here. Lock ourselves on. Shrink this down. And copy and paste NUR into the fixture text. How does this come out to? NR. Yeah, it's the NR, not the NUR, the NR, which means not ranked if you're wondering. So, and you are. Perfect. Yeah, 0.25, put on a corner right around here-ish. Doesn't have to be perfect because, well, it's a crabmobile. It's not perfect whatsoever. And with the top speed, what does it claim now? It's showing 18.4 miles an hour. Is that really true? Let's see. Go up because, well, it kind of sucks a top speed graph. Like, when things update, they don't really update as much compared to, like, the previous versions. Yeah, 18.4 miles an hour according to automation. Let's see what the times will give us on the automation test track. So, it's going to take a while to load. I'll just give you the overall times of automation and the airfield test track, a.k.a. the Top Gear test track, and see what the times are. So... This, 9 minutes, 3 seconds, 27 milliseconds at the automation track. The airfield, I'm guessing this is probably like a 453. Let's see, 453? 503, 10 seconds off. So anyways, let's export this vehicle to Beam and G Drive and see how this piece of crap, Crapmobile V3 Neur Edition will run with this 3 horsepower engine. So here we are parked up right here at the most random start and finish line of this here racetrack. So I pretty much said what I said about the vehicle earlier, so let's get ready to start things off here. Three, two, one, neutral drop, go. We're... we're stuck. <laughs> it's an uphill, so let me try to reverse. Uh... No, we were like hella stuck. What's going on here? All right, got me so free, so I gotta do some like random neutral drops just to get things going. Since this is an uphill, I'm gonna try to do like a uh, like a head start to get ourselves up this hill and then down on the other side. So stop here and then gun it. And oh boy, speed test. One mile an hour right now within three seconds, and then two miles an hour within two and a, uh, six and a half seconds. God damn! All right, make this sick right hand corner. Gonna take the high line. And we're going at a speed of six miles an hour and still going. Probably to top of my mind here with the wind app, I should probably get rid of this and replace it with the torque graph to see the torque curve and the power curve to get a look at how this vehicle behaves in terms of performance. And first gear, no problem with that uphill. So <laughs> it was weird how I was stuck there for some odd reason, but we're not stuck anymore. We're going downhill. So with this meta right here, go to neutral, shut off the engine. Well, you can shut off or keep it running, but I'll shut off just in case if I upshift for whatever reason and blow the engine because in this part of time trial, you cannot 
blow the engine whatsoever. I mean, if you do and you're like within like the 20 or 30 minute time of this lap here, then you pretty much wasted that much time of this here time trial. So the reason why I'm doing this, challenging myself, is because I was inspired by Jimmy Broadbent's video, which he made about a couple of months ago using the Benz Patton motor wagon and got like... Well, like an hour and a half lap time going around the entirety of the track. Well, his vehicle was, of course, the first gas-powered car, like practical gas-powered car, the first three-wheeler. He pretty much got the worst vehicle of all time and raced around his track. But for B, I got the worst four-wheeler ever made, well, ever made in a video game, not in real life, to race the entirety of the Nürburgring. So we really slowed down here quite a bit. Bit. So we're going like at residential road speeds around 25 miles an hour as I make this left hand bend and we may have to start the vehicle up again sometime soon. Yeah, so go to first gear, get ready to start up around 14, so start up now. Go. Alright, first gear, engine start up, we got 40.1 miles a gallon and we're somewhat rapidly decreasing like it's a freaking stock market as of right now. We're at the three kilometer stretch right now, got three kilometers driven as of right now, and we got this big downhill going here, so let's get ready to go to neutral right about now. So go neutral and engine off, and look at the speed. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and we're still be going quite a long ways down here. So we got a little ways to go this downhill stretch, so like uh, the video I showed you earlier of the v the one horsepower version of the Crapmobile, my original V3 variant of this car, is I believe it's this hill coming up right here. Yeah, so I tried going up here as fast as I can, then the vehicle slows down and then pretty much stops. They did the, like, the reverse switcheroo method, the zigzag method, and unfortunately, it didn't work. Which I hope to God with this three horsepower engine variant of this car, let's see. We were going up pretty further than last time. I think I left, uh, I think I was stuck, like, at that little arrow that says, whatever, N-E. And at N-1, Simon? Simon and one So I was around there last time. I think it's pretty much my personal best as of right now, so how will this behave? So, gonna reverse, and gun it. Keep going, keep going, and stop. So we're at the heart sign, the less than sign three mark, so let's see. Accelerate. Swing right, hard as I can, accelerate hard as I can, and... Ah, stopped. And I did kind of notice, it seems like when you go in reverse and then gun it as fast as you can, it seems like you do get a little bit more speed compared to driving forwards. It seems like that's the reason why. Not already the reason why, but just my experience. If I had like a four or a five horsepower variant of this car, I believe I could probably conquer this hill like one or two swings doing this. Like, it'll get up the hill, but it'll be a pain in the ass. But with this car, I want to have a, like a balance between a pain in the ass and being crappy at the same time. I don't want to make myself too easy by making a very powerful engine of this car, like a 10 horsepower engine, like a freaking hot lap of this car. But that's not going to be the case with this video. Well, it's been like almost seven minutes and I've been stuck at the same exact spot doing the pendulum effect, just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I think three horsepower may not do the trick, so a four horsepower engine? Will that work out? So let's abandon this time trial and go back to automation. <laughs> Alright, just edited the engine yet again and made a four horsepower variant. So we got ourselves four horsepower, 3500 RPM, and a torque of a mildly suggestive 6.9 pounds feet of torque at 2400 RPM, and damn it's a nice number. And the top speed according to this bad boy, 27.4 miles an hour, so you should be in good shape in a Nürburgring again. So who cares about the times, take you back to the Nürburgring with this crappy ass car right now. So here we are back at the track with this vehicle, so we don't need another introduction to this type of trial or this vehicle in general. So let's get ready to start things off in three, two, one, go. We're stuck again, really? All right, here we go. So first gear, look at this. No problem whatsoever. First gear and capped out. At around 13 miles an hour, much, much quicker than the three horsepower variant. Give credit to that. What if I go to second gear? Well, I considerably, um, what the hell is that noise? The engine's like, kind of messed up of it here, so second gear, you'll slow down considerably. So I pretty much went over this again, like you've seen earlier, so go to neutral, turn the engine off, and get you back to that, uh, hill that I was having trouble at earlier in the video. 
Coming up at the hill again, so this checkpoint we got is a 3 minutes, 52 seconds, 935 milliseconds. So let's go to first gear and start the vehicle up right about now. And accelerate and get ready to do the old pendulum swing type of ordeal. Let's see. 7 miles an hour, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, stop. Right at the Audi ring, so let's go to reverse, steer all the way, and go. Steer as we go. Have a speed of watch out. All right, we just got a little sliver of uphill to go, going backwards up in here at a constant speed of two miles an hour. I mean, it's just a little bit of uphill. We should probably increase speed. Let's pay attention to the RPM. We're at a constant like, okay, three miles an hour. So <laughs> I guess we have to do the run in reverse, maybe five miles an hour. So we're coming up to some flat land and we're on a hill. There's like a a few swings and we're good to go. Unlike the three horsepower version of this car, we couldn't do that. We were stuck at near top part of the hill. So imagine you're on the Nürburgring, just driving around as so, but it's gonna be the tourist variant of the track, not the full blown variant, the 20.8 kilometer version. Well, the tourist version is like 19.1 kilometers because it doesn't include the entirety of that straight road near the end of the course. Like I imagine they allowed this type of vehicle to drive on the track and you got like one car blown by me at like 70 miles an hour and this guy at like 80 miles an hour and you got me driving at 13 miles an hour. <laughs> Just imagine the dedication, the sheer dedication of somebody doing something like this. Imagine me in real life. Kind of like a Top Gear, the Pain del Chocolate or whatever, that pedal-powered Porsche that they did in Top Gear. Was it powered by James or somebody else? But that vehicle had the worst performing time, like charted time, at the Top Gear test track of like 12 or 15 minutes or something like that. Unlike this vehicle, which I'm guessing lap time, probably like an hour, five, hour, ten minutes. You probably got a glance at the thumbnail saying it took me over an hour to do this. All right, we got a downhill and we're increasing speed, so good. Let's see how fast we're gonna go down here, which I believe is gonna be quite a bit of downhill, pretty majority of like this portion of the track. Even though what is interesting about this track, just to uh, pop this in, like if you look at like the like the graffiti out of the track and everything, like there's some parts of the graffiti like it's been repeated throughout the entirety of the track. Like you'll probably see that from like whatever that four kilometer stretch, you'll see it again at like the seven or the ten kilometer part of the road of the, of the track. Look at that, 50 miles, we're about to go highway speeds on this downhill stretch. So how fast are we going? 58 miles an hour. We're gonna get like highway speeds, okay, 60 miles an hour. <laughs> So, that'd be kilometers, well right now, about 100 kilometers, 62 miles an hour, so 62 or 100 kilometers is the best speed we got as of right now. And also to throw this out, why am I having troubles with the textures on here? Even though I checked out the world editor, but had an F11 in the world editor, there's really no textures or no missing textures that you could find to like fix like the, the fences and everything. I tried doing that, but since there's no textures available for like, like this sign here or the fences to my left, this metal fence, like I couldn't do nothing about that. Eat my shorts. Yeah, I agree. Eat my shorts, dude. And also what just hit me with this straightaway right here, like this portion of track is, I don't know if I told you this, but back in like 2015 or 16, something like that. Well, I've been to the Detroit Auto Show, the NIIAS, I believe the initialization for the Detroit Auto Show is that in the Dodge section, there was a Dodge Viper, the final generation model of that car. And there was a driving simulator where you could drive the Dodge Viper around a Nürburgring, but you're on a time limit, which at the top of my mind, I think the time limit was like a three minute time and right around here like this exact corner was the pretty much the final stretch i took before time expired i wiped out like a few times like i hit the wall overcorrected, or that little bend back there where you go up that uphill and that little like s corner is where i wiped out and i wiped out but took it way too fast and went up on the grass and hastily went back on the tarmac I mean, it was pretty of a cool experience having, well, a full-size real car on a Nürburgring racetrack, but what was kind of interesting with how they had it laid out is once you, like, if you crash out, and if you were to turn around, there's no reverse gear. If you were to reverse, they had to reset you back at the start and finish line. You can't reverse. And speaking of those people, when I was waiting in line for, like, a good, I think, 45 minutes to get in the driver's seat of that Dodge Viper, I mean, everyone was doing horrible driving at, we got a big-ass bend. Break. Deja vu.
Okay, first time in the brakes right there. So I was about to say, people driving on the Nurburgring with that car, they boasted horrible. Like, they were driving and everything, and they were, like, just oversteering. Like, they were driving way too fast, and uh, took a corner and oversteered or understeered, hit the wall, banging around multiple times, and it was just bad for those people. But for me, I wiped out a few times, but I didn't, like, whatever, go up at the wall and had to be reset, nothing like that. Just a couple bangs, a couple dents, but... Nothing major, but that was the first time of me using a driving simulator, and that was me before I became a licensed driver, and we got a big uphill. Start the engine, get up on the curb, and get ready to do our high heart saving, our pendulum swing type of ordeals, and wait, wait, nine miles an hour? We're at constant nine miles an hour? We don't have to. Okay, I am really liking this car already, so I I'm thinking now of how good this car performs. You don't have to do a lot, a lot of, like, those pendulum swings or whatever. I'm thinking lap time, like, probably exactly one hour. One hour will be our lap time. And according to the sign, we are at the 11-kilometer stretch right here, this checkpoint. And of a checkpoint time of 18 minutes, 57 seconds, 789 milliseconds. <laughs> We're not even halfway there in terms of time, so bear with me on this one, folks. It showed we're at 11 kilometers as of right now, so is that really the halfway point? Because the carousel is like the 13 or the 14 kilometer point, so it's usually the carousel that's like the 60-65% mark of this track, I believe. I don't know if it's me or the 4 horsepower variant of this car is much louder. And real quick, what is this corner right here? We got the Kessel Chen, right? And no materials. Again, how do I fix this on the Nurburgring PBR update of this map? Is it because I got some textures that's like flat out missing while downloading the, the file or something? Or I have to like really, really search the world editor and just like install the, I already installed the texture, but locate the correct texture to get rid of the dull materials like right here, the little orange fence right here. That should be orange. That should be like a silvery color. What type of road is that on the left? Is that like a service access road or something? And how about this right here? Is it supposed to be like a parking lot or something? I haven't really paid attention to much like the outside details of the entire stretch of the Nurburgring. I know with the final straightaway, there's like a couple of bridges and tunnels that leads you to like a village or something like that. And hey look, it's the RIP E36 car again. In the E-Boy shorts and the whatever 2010 type of graffiti on the, the, the ground. What, is this like the fifth? six times seeing that or something it's like a settled corsa which the the bot author they said his name kirby guy which ported the track from a settled corsa and put this in this game and a settled corsa they just pretty much just copy and pasted the graffiti on the ground and just spread it everywhere and here we are at the carousel hashtag keep fighting michael what cancer or something we don't want to go too far into him so we're in the carousel and here's the spot where i took the screenshot for the thumbnail and here we are at the 14 ish kilometer mark and we got to do the switcheroo pendulum swing method yet again reverse get up on the curb and watch me do this for like 20 times just to get above this hill here and we're at the 30 minute mark we just reached it a little bit ago so getting at the top maybe a 34 minute maybe who knows so i'll take note i was at the 30 minute mark at the top 34 34 20 i believe who knows all right now we're increasing speed so we're at a 33 minutes and around 40 seconds so it was about 30 40 seconds off from my intended time, my prediction, from earlier at the bottom of the hill, way back there. So yeah, we're really increasing speed, we're finally pretty much at the top, so that is good. So we can keep on going while the speed test is going to keep on counting up to 62 miles an hour, so we can't reach 62, so why bother counting, get rid of it. And also about the frickin' exhaust smoke and the lack of catalytic converters, just imagine like, whatever, 20 or 30 cars driving down here at the same time. This is almost the point where you'll cause a crap ton of, of emissions, the point where you're causing a crap ton of pollution. 
And five-ish kilometers to go, the 15 kilometer mark. And I swear if we get under one hour, like way under an hour, like uh, I thought it would be. I was thinking like an hour, five, hour, ten minutes. Like imagine we get a time of like 50 minutes or something like that, which I don't know if there's any more uphills up to go. So it appears the rest of this course, is it just all downhill? Not like all downhill, but I passed one downhill at the 17 kilometer mark. And we should be going up to the 18 real soon. And not only that, we should come up to the miniature carousel, which is basically the 80-85% mark. What if I take a look at this here checkpoint way in distance? So what do we got up ahead? We got this guy, this band, that uphill, and more uphill, and the mini carousel da -da -da -da, over there. Yeah, there's a straight right there, that checkpoint. So that checkpoint way in the distance is where that little straightaway is at. So it should take us about an hour, roughly. If I recall, the course is like 20.8 kilometers. So I believe that section is the 19 kilometer mark. I'll find out sooner or later as I pay attention to these road signs to my right. All right, here we go at the miniature carousel. Get on the white marker or the white bush of concrete because why not stay on the white line or the white rectangular bar thingamajig of the concrete and slap ourselves back on. Bang. If you had a race car, then you'll really be bottoming it out going from the white concrete to the blacktop concrete. VW. Nice decal. VW. Nice decal again. They literally copy and pasted two Volkswagen uh, freaking logos like, what, 200 feet away from one another. Damn, I said, of course, so these boys lazy. And we're at 19 kilometers. We're really making record time. Oh, oh, wow. 43 minutes, and we got the infamous straightaway right here. So, <laughs> it could be a 50 minute lap time. I can't believe it's taken me this quick to go around the Nurburgring. I thought it'll be like a one hour oh, bu -bu 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 -bu. over rev risk. We're okay. It's just a simple over rev risk. We're okay. I mean, it'll take you an hour if you're like brand new to driving this vehicle, doing like the back and forth, back and forth, pendulum swing type of ordeal. But if you're like me, who pretty much got it like within like a few tries with the three horsepower vehicle, the one horsepower vehicle, this four horsepower vehicle, it'll pretty much be right down in there. Pretty much like a quick learner when it comes to games. And off to my left, yeah, there's a freaking gas station right here. What type of gas station do we got? Let me do this with the control right here, and it's the ED. A dollar thirty-six euros of diesel fuel? Cheaper than we got in the United States. Around three dollars of gas around California, which I'm not gonna live out there anytime soon, regardless if anyone tries to pressure me. You get five dollars of gas. I mean, that's one of the downsides of, like, living out in California. I mean, if you're okay living in California, be at it. I'm not forcing you to move out or nothing like that, but just from an Ohioan perspective, a Midwestern perspective, everything's pretty damn expensive. From every proposition they pass, to tax you and everything, and just tax in general, it's just cost of living's too high, purchase of things too high, and the cost of gas is too high. And on top of that, I did see some news video, I don't know if it was based in San Francisco, Sacramento, LA, or something like that, but there was a news video of like a freaking hut, like a basic one family hut, like a 800, 900 square foot property or something like that, and it cost you like $150,000. We're like here in Ohio, that'll cost you like $40,000 or something like that, depending on the neighborhood, the city you live in, the neighborhood you live in, or whatever. Don't cost of factors or the guy selling it is just a pos just marking up the rates like it's freaking 19 not 1999 but 2008 and off to my right here okay here's the 21 kilometer hour mark so off to my right right here that is where you exit if you're a tourist driving on this track on like a track day or something like normally in a track day session you're not allowed to keep driving straight right here there's like usually a buttload of cones and some marshals that tells you to pull off right here. And on top of that, which I'm not gonna demonstrate right now, but like right, pretty much like after the race here, if you're to spawn at the tourist section of the track, you go through the ground for some odd reason, which you can obviously tell you got the void right there by the little tow truck and an ambulance. And also, what's kind of interesting, a little bit of a detail, at the sign here, you got the little caution slippery when wet thing, the little road sign, and the Lich Estatten, which means lights on in German. 
I don't know if I pronounced that right. So we're over the 50 minute mark as of right now. So finish time, probably 52 minutes. And there goes the RIP E36 car again. And there's the one kilometer sign. So that little start and finish line, that bridge right there, the Audi R8 V10 bridge, is that the start and finish line? Like the historical start finish line or like the track day sections or something like that? Or the Nürburgring like 24 hour GP starting line or something like that? I think that's where the distance resets itself back there and hello mr tow truck hello mr an audi no it's audi or skoda what is this this is skoda uh appears to be a skoda i believe yeah it looks skoda e and it's a nurburgring random like uh like a traffic car like a bar show or something like that i don't know so on the last and final quarter make the sweeping bend very slowly very cautiously and get a final time of 52 minutes 32 seconds, 865 milliseconds. God freaking D four letter word, we are done. Well, we got under one hour, which isn't too surprising as I found out later on driving down this track here, which is better than what I thought it would be. I thought it'd be like a one hour time, but 52 sec or 52 minutes, uh, I'm happy with that. So crash this vehicle at a slow speed, everything as is. God damn, American Steel, am I right? And real briefly, just to prove the point that if you were to spawn at the Taurus section of the track here, so will I go through the ground right here? Uh, yes I do. So, if you spawn right there, or being around that road, you're falling into the abyss as so. So let me back up in case we get any ear rape. Oil starved of oil. There we go. I would say any time that we would frickin' crash in the abyss upside down and, uh, real quick. Hold on, one, the tire is a frickin' Beyblade up in here. S weird screech! Oh my god, it is smoking. Uh, say, uh, Power of Christ compels you! What is that from, um, this is the end? So for the engine, let me take a good look at this. So, doing a little wheelie right here. Dude, it is completely bangled and it still runs. I mean, listen. I'm serious, what the hell? <laughs> So that'll do it with Automation and BMG Drive with the Crapmobile version 3 Nerd Edition. Well, going around one whole lap, around 21 kilometers of the entire stretch of the Nurburgring, getting a time of around 52 minutes. Well, that 52 minutes of hell was mixed between worth it to not worth it. But at least it proves the point that this bad of an automobile in terms of performance can really tackle the Nurburgring. No matter how long it takes, it is capable of doing one whole lap. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos like this in the future. And also check out my social media down in the description below. So this is Tries Rising Up and signing out.